Street Fighter has a long assortment of weirdos in its cast. We have the iconic ones like Blanca, but there's a large, large assortment of weird little fellas. Necro, Q, 12, Sodom. Remember fucking Sodom? Remember Rufus? Remember El Fuerte? Street Fighter's legacy is littered with the corpses of clowns. But in my eyes, there was no character that made me question what the developers were thinking more than Fang. Fang was the resident annoying weirdo of Street Fighter V. Being a fucking base roster character, Fang was seen as just a really annoying little shit in the roster. His gimmick was that he could poison his opponents, but A, the poison did very little damage, and B, it couldn't actually kill you. So basically, he just sort of went, what if it was purple? Let's see it purple. Yeah! Fang also wasn't very good. I would say he was a nightmare to balance, but I'm pretty sure he remained bottom tier for basically the entirety of the game's lifespan. Not to mention, he wasn't exactly popular. Don't get me wrong, there were a couple of high-level Fang players. Hell, Meta even won a major with him. But as time went on and Street Fighter V crawled to an end, people didn't think about Fang. With Street Fighter VI on the horizon and everyone's focus on the new people in the roster, Street Fighter V began to fade. And with it, so did Fang. And the character was destined to remain as one of the Street Fighter rejects. Well, he still has one fan at least. Aki is the new character in Street Fighter 6, and she is the game's spiritual successor to Fang. But Capcom did what they always do, and while on the surface she definitely looks like she functions similarly to the weird Birdman who's obsessed with coming in second place, she's actually very, very different. So, let's talk about Aki. Now, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but recently Capcom has been doing some weird things with their characters in Street Fighter VI. I'm not sure if it's just because their development team is actually well-funded and managed, but several of the Street Fighter VI characters feel like better versions of previous characters from the series. This is most obvious with returning characters having most of their tools that they used to have in the previous games, and even more funny gimmicks, but if you look close enough you can see some of the new characters have hints of the previous cast that were left to rot in Street Fighter's past. A French grappler that Vortex is in the opponent for constant mix-ups. Where have I heard this one before? But while some of these are definitely a little bit of a stretch, I can say with full confidence that Aki feels like Fang if he actually had some sauce while still feeling like a completely different character. How is this? Well, let's figure that out by going over her kit. Aki's unique mechanic is poison because of course it is. Several of her special moves and even some of her normals apply poison to the opponent. It's amazing how they can fit a whole character in that pool. The poison, just like in Street Fighter V, doesn't do that much damage. If you let the whole thing run out, you do less damage than two jabs, but we'll get onto what the poison does better later when we talk about her special moves. Her normals are a lot like her in the way that they're kind of funky. Her jabs are pretty standard, with her crouching jab being the fastest button at four frames. Same with her light kicks, while her medium punches are both really good. However, her medium kicks are entirely dedicated to just being pokes. And I mean, just being pokes. If she's close enough, she can link standing medium kick into medium punch, but both her standing and crouching medium kick can't be special cancelled into anything. So even though they're good pokes, you don't get a lot of reward off of hitting them. In fact, Aki doesn't have a single cancelable low at all. So if you correctly hit a crouching medium kick while trying to check your opponent, you just gotta keep playing the footsies game. It's very strange, but honestly, Aki's got a lot of strange things, so it's not a deal breaker thanks to something we'll get onto really quickly. Her heavy buttons are actually pretty good. Her standing heavy punch has a follow-up which applies poison to the opponent if she connects it. And if the opponent already has poison on them, it causes them to activate Toxic Blossom. Toxic Blossom is Aki's unique mechanic, as it causes her special moves to get new properties. I'm also going to refer to this as popping from now on, because every time I see her do it, I imagine the enemy going This is generally more damage, but a lot of the time it gets you new combo opportunities and setups. We'll get onto those when we get to the special moves though. So how does Aki open people up? Like, what is she actually doing to get them? Well, apart from her generally decent anti-pokes, Aki has the weirdest unique movement option I've ever seen in Street Fighter. She can do this! I know it's supposed to be a snake, but I can't see it as anything other than a worm, so... When Aki goes worm mode, she gains access to three new moves. Any punch causes her to fly across the screen like one of those fuckers from Dune, dealing a bunch of damage. This is Venomous Fang, and it is a very committal but rewarding approach tool. If the enemy is poisoned, it causes them to pop, leaving them in a crumple state, allowing for a free combo. But it's 
pretty risky since it's negative 25 on block, so you only want to use it when you know it's going to connect. If she presses kick, she gets heal strike, a double hitting mid attack that leaves her at negative 3 on block. It goes nowhere near as far as Venomous Fang does, but it's completely safe on block, meaning it's a much more reliable option. So what's the final one then? Well, if she presses throw, she gets Entrapment, a 23 frame command grab. It's pretty hard to see the startup of the move, but good god does it hurt. It looks extremely painful, and you feel like an idiot when you get hit by it, but it gives Aki a nice amount of strike throw with the right setup. Not to mention, both options lead to her setting up more things, but like I've said three times before, we'll get to that later. I feel like I'm constantly pushing things back, but we haven't even talked about her special moves yet. So, if you're primarily a Street Fighter player, hi, welcome. I'm going to start using numpad notation now. No, 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 it's okay. Don't click off, I promise. It's not as scary as you think it is, okay? Just know that when I say two, I mean down. When I say six, I mean forward. When I say four, I mean back. And when I say eight, I mean up. And don't worry, I don't actually say eight. Here's a chart of a numpad if you want to memorize the full thing, but if not, eh, you'll figure it out. So, her 214 punch is technically her projectile, but it has different properties depending on which strength Aki uses. 214 Light Punch is straight up a poison bubble projectile. If it hits the opponent, it deals a decent chunk of damage and applies the poison effect to the opponent. Pretty simple stuff. Her 214 Medium Punch is where it gets interesting though, as Aki instead puts down a puddle of poison in front of her at around mid-screen. If you stand in the puddle, you instantly get poisoned even if you're blocking, meaning Aki is able to apply poison for relatively free with the correct setups. See what I said with the command grab? It's there. 214 Heavy Punch has her summon a bubble right in front of her, which she then immediately pops. It doesn't have a toxic blossom property, but it can be used for juggles in the corner, which is very cool. The OD version of 214 Punch has Aki send out a multi-hitting fireball. Aki can use the fireball to close the gap and getting on her opponent, allowing for basic strike throw mix up when going worm mode. All of these attacks are about setting up poison on your opponent in different ways, be it winning a fireball war, setting up a trap, or just ending a combo. With all of these poison setups, you could say that Aki's a little toxic. Oh. But what if you wanted to cash out of the poison? What options do you have? Is there anything else in her kit that pops? Well, of course there is. So let's talk about the special move that gave me a heart attack. Aki's 236P, aka Serpent Lash. Serpent Lash is a long poke that can go in three different directions. Light Punch goes directly in front of her, Heavy goes straight up, and Medium goes between the two in a diagonal. Now, when most people saw this, they assumed that it was going to be a ridiculous poke that could lead to a lot of good zoning. But I bring the unfortunate news that while this move is decent, it's far from a zoning tool. The Light Punch version feels like a projectile in its use, but instead of going full screen, it kind of just goes directly in front of Aki. It clashes with one-hit projectiles, so it really makes it feel like a fireball in a different context. It is a good poke though, especially because if it connects, it poisons the opponent. If the opponent is already poisoned, it causes them to pop, allowing for combo potential or a soft knockdown situation. The medium version is basically just a call-out tool or a situational combo tool. The heavy version is pretty versatile. So to begin with, her heavy version is an anti-air, but not in the way that most Street Fighter anti-airs work. Instead of having a move that is specifically air invulnerable after a certain amount of time, Aki simply relies on low profiling the jump and attack and hitting the opponent. It's not always reliable, but it works better than you think it would, since Aki actually steps forward when using the attack. Funnily enough though, if the opponent jumps over Aki, she actually has a harder time of dealing with anti-airing them when compared to just jumping in from a distance. But that's not the star of the show here. When Aki connects the attack, she applies poison to the opponents, obviously, but if they're already poisoned, they pop and are left flying backwards, allowing for Aki to get more combos. The easiest thing for her to do is to simply do 236 LP and send the opponent back to full screen and cover them in poison. But I'm sure that there's some lab monsters out there cooking something cool up with her right now. Her OD version is pretty interesting. Being the longest startup move, it's harder to combo into, but when it does, it causes the opponent to be dragged towards Aki, closing the gap. 
If the opponent is already poisoned, it puts them in a crumple state, allowing for ridiculous damage in combos. It's good as an anti-zoning tool and a combo extender if you get the correct opener. And those are all the special moves that interact with poison. But we're still not done as Aki has two more special moves that have unique properties. Aki's 2 and 4 kick is called Cruel Fate, and it has her fly upwards in the air and stab down at the opponent. All versions apart from OD are negative 3 on block, meaning that even if they block it, it's safe and it needs to be anti-aired in order to be beaten. The benefit of the move is that it can technically work as an auto shimmy if you pretend to go for a tick throw, as the opponent will just whiff their throw, allowing you to get a full punish counter combo. It can also be good to get over projectiles and such. The OD version actually leaves her at plus 2 on block, and if the attack connects, she does a unique hit grab animation that applies poison to the opponent. Her 236k is Snake Step, and it's a unique movement tool. Aki slides across the ground a set distance depending on the button that she presses. It's not the fastest, being between 37 and 43 frames, depending on the button that you are using, but it's surprisingly effective when you're not looking for it. The OD version has her become strike invulnerable from frame one, and lasts a majority of the animation, getting her out of a lot of situations. Take note that it's only strike invulnerable though. If your opponent is throw looping you or manages to call you out and throw you, then it isn't gonna help you. Finally, before we get onto a game plan, Let's look at her supers. Her level 1 is 236-236K, also known as Deadly Implication. It is a reversal super that deals a good amount of damage and puts poison on the opponent. It's good for the same reason that most reversal level 1s are good. Decent damage, fully invulnerable, and it has the added benefit of starting her poison game. Her level 2 is 214-214P, also known as Tainted Talons. Aki goes fucking crazy and sends all of her claw tendrils to a specific point on the screen, depending on what button she used to input the attack. Light is close, medium is mid-screen, heavy is full screen. Once the super is ended, she leaves a massive pool of poison on the ground. It's basically a bigger version of her 214 MP that lasts longer. This super is very good at punishing people from full screen, but it isn't invincible, and she can get hit during the animation. So if you don't also hit a projectile in the startup, you can be pretty fucked. Her level 3 and critical art are 236-236P, also known as Claws of Yazi. Not too much to talk about here, Aki just poisons the shit out of you and deals a bunch of damage. A very standard level 3 and critical art. Now, as you can probably tell, Aki is a bit of a strange character. she got a bit of quirky stuff going on with her. She's a little funky gal. But how does she play? What's her plan? Well, to begin with, she's not a zone. Far from it. I thought that looking at her trailers and everything that she might be, considering how powerful they made a 236 LP look, but it's actually not as crazy as it may seem. Don't get me wrong, it is a very good poke, but it's not dominating the field like some other characters are. She's also not really a rushdown character. She has good tools when she's close up to you, but she's not going to be rushing you down from full screen and completely mixing your shit when she's in. Well, all of the time. Her buttons are also kind of mid. The lack of any cancelable low means that she's not able to convert off of things like her crouching medium kick, meaning that she's not able to quickly open people up with a cheeky low. She does have a plus on block button though, being forward heavy kick. But what is she good at? Well, Aki seems to be a momentum trap based set play character. Aki's at her best when she got poison on you, and she's pushing the advantages that she gets from that. Since you get poison from so much of her kit, Aki's able to begin pressuring her opponent really early on in the game with the threat of landing a high damage combo. Her combos when she doesn't have poison aren't that crazy. In fact, a lot of people are saying that it seems like she does low damage in general. However, once she has poison on you, she's easily able to convert most of her basic hits into longer and more damaging combos. A lot of her combos also end with her putting poison back on you, or she finishes in a way where she can get the trap on you, so she's able to keep looping the damage and resetting the poison time. Plus, she has really good Oki, especially for a Street Fighter character. I haven't found a lot of Oki setups myself, but I did find that if you end a combo with 236 HP, no poison, you're able to get a true safe jump setup. There's no option that covers both quick rise and back roll from what I can find, so you kind of have to just be right or react like a god, but it's still a really reliable option if you get it consistently. Not to mention, in the corner, she's able to easily set up her poison tool with 2 and 4 MP, and she gets good damage combos off of anything she does. She is going to take time to get those setups though. She doesn't feel weak when the opponent doesn't have poison on her, but without the poison there, it feels like she can't do everything she wants at all points of the screen. She also has 
very weak defense. Having no true anti-air move and only strike invulnerable reversal means that she's especially weak to throw loops and close range jump ins. Her buttons are okay, and she does have a free frame crouching jab, but she's not out poking a lot of characters, and even if she does, she's not getting a high reward off of them, since she's not really able to confirm anything substantial. Her mix-up potential can be pretty potent though, and once she's got you conditioned and had you on a couple knockdowns, she's able to slowly tear you apart piece by piece in order to absolutely rinse your health bar before you even realize what happened. The threat of that command grab when she goes worm mode is just enough to be able to make you think maybe you should mash or maybe you should jump and she can catch both of those options with her other tools. But there is one thing that's even more strange about Aki that I've not yet to bring up. And no, it's not the fact that she's fucking insane. I kind of like that about her. It's the fact that Aki feels nothing like Fang. Like, at all. Aside from the fact that Fang is a charge character and Aki is all motions, these characters position themselves and play the game in exceptionally different ways. I can't tell if Aki is just a more refined version of Fang, focusing on applying poison and doing pressure strings to threaten the opponent, or if they literally took the bare minimum of what they could from Fang and decided to do something completely different because they could. By making it so that she's able to expunge the poison on people for added properties to her moves, Aki makes the low damage poison go from a nuisance to something that's actually a threat. Her poison feels very close to something like Testament's stain from Strive, being an effect that you just have on you now and need to deal with by hitting Aki, or waiting for it to go away, however it has the added benefit of at least doing some damage over time. Aki is a very interesting character for Street Fighter. She definitely feels like part of the weirdo group, but I think her take on Fang's gameplay style is unique enough to make her stand out from the rest of the cast and overshadow him quite a bit. By doing something as simple as giving more bite to the poison, Capcom has managed to take a character that many people saw as a failed concept and turn them into something engaging. She's definitely not the character for everyone, but for the people that like her, they're really going to like her. And that is Aki. I was originally going to make a video like this when Rashid came out, but then I had a different idea and um, it fell through. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoy. Today is the last day of September on Twitch, and we're still not at all the rewards. I'm going to be playing Guilty Gear Strive in the park, and I want to see if you guys can get to that 500 sub mark. If you think you can do it, come over and try. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Very special thanks to 64 MHz Almost Nap Time, Ben from Canada, Cervantes de Leon, Daniel Wiederich, DJ Mindsoul, Fexo, Games.png, I Am Naoto, Jackal Reeves, King of Games, MP04, Ray W, Richmine, Super, Falcon, Tom Tanks, Voltaic Charge, and Zandatsu for being Tier 2 Patron supporters.